Hey everybody, it is Eric Lucas with GG Homes here in San Diego, your favorite local real estate investor. And I wanted to talk today about getting the realist on pocket listings that you bring to investors. So the truth is that there's five or six larger investment groups here in San Diego that are active, and us is one of those groups. Um, and really, actually, most of us get along. We're friendly competitors. The key word, most of us. We don't get along with everybody, but for most of the groups, we do. And I think a little competition is healthy. You know, I never mind losing a deal when I'm outbid on the deal. And that happens, you know, every now and then. It's just part of being an investor. Sometimes you get outbid. Sometimes, um, you know, other investment groups really need a deal, so they're willing to pay a little bit more. Sometimes certain investment groups like areas more than we do. Uh, and sometimes we just have a disagreement in numbers and another group thinks they can get a little bit more for a property than we do. Whatever the case, being outbid happens. Um, I lose deals you know, every now and then to being outbid, even though we try to be competitive and we always try to be the high bidder. You know, sometimes we're not. Um, and I never mind losing deals where I'm outbid on price. But what absolutely kills me is when I'm outbid because I tell an agent that I can pay a certain number but I cannot relist with them at that number. And then another investment group says, oh, we can pay that number and we can relist with you. And they get that deal. And this happens quite a bit. And really the reason why it happens is because the truth is these pocket listings are kind of rare, like I've mentioned before. Um, if you give a seller an option of either taking a quick cash sale or listing the property on the MLS and going through all the hassles of selling, but getting top dollar, most sellers want top dollar for their property, so most are willing to go through that listing hassle. But when you do get a seller that is willing to take that quick cash sale, that is gonna be a big payday for you, and most of you know that, so you shop it to investment groups like us. And uh, obviously, too, we all say at least that we're gonna offer the back end. Now, will an investment group deliver on that back end? We always do what we say we're gonna do. As a matter of fact, I always give you two numbers, I tell you, Here's what we need to be with a realist, and here's my max with no realist. And it kills me because I lost a deal recently where you know our max number was 550, but we needed to be at 520 with the realist, uh, or 525 with the realist rather. So another group actually ended up paying 550 and telling the agent they would relist with them, but uh, they did not end up relisting with them. And it kills me because we were in to pay 550 for a deal, and I was honest with them and I lost the deal. And then the other group that lied about the realist got the deal. Um, you know, so as an agent, how do you protect yourself from this? Um, and really one of the easiest things to do is to look, one is to ask around about that investment group and see what type of reputation they have. But I think even an even better way is to look on the MLS, look at their last 15 deals, or if they're big enough, look at 15 deals they currently have on market. Are all those 15 deals listed with the same agent? If they are, that's a red flag that they have an in-house agent that they always list with. But if they've got 15 deals on the MLS and seven are with different agents and seven are with the same agent, well, that shows you that, okay, it looks like they deliver on their promise and sometimes they do relist with the agent that brought them the deal. And again, what I mean by that is if they've got 15 listings and there's seven different agents on seven different properties, well, how did that happen? It happened because those are the agents that probably brought, bought them the deal. Um, and the other deals, you know, obviously maybe the spread was too skinny, so that's why it's listed with the same, you know, the same big block agent or whatever. So um, anyway, you know, if you've got these off-market deals, just be careful out there. Um, do your, your due diligence on investment groups, and that's how you can kind of protect yourself from, um, you know, making sure you get that realist if you're promised that realist. Um, and again, we always, you know, do what we say we're going to do. So, um, you know, I, I really like to try to keep, keep realtors happy. So um, I guess the last thing I'll say is that, you know, too, if you've got a deal and you've got a seller that prefers a quick cash sale and uh, you know they want 450, 450 would make them over the moon. Um, bring us the deal first before you shop it around and see if we can pay 450 for that deal because if we can get that deal done right away at 450 with the realist and I don't have to worry about competition, uh, then it's a smoother transaction, right? Um, whereas, you know, if you shop the deal around and then maybe we have to come up in price, that can affect the realist. So, um, you know, again, if you've got that client that is happy at a certain number and you feel like you're feeling, fulfilling your fiduciary responsibilities by getting them that number, 
um, then I don't think it's unfair for you to show that deal to one investor if that investor is going to pay that number for it. So, uh, and truthfully, that's how we get most of our deals where we relist with the agent, is deals where there's not a lot of competition because competition means we got to come up in price. And if we got to come up in price, that affects the relist. But um, if we see a deal and only our eyes are on it, then um, I can tell you, hey, 450 works. And oh, yeah, you're right. We can relist with you at 5%, 2.5% and 2.5%. So anyway, Eric Lucas with GG Homes here in San Diego, signing off. Hope everyone is having a great June. Take care.